Welcome to section 9.x. All right, gentle people, I should explain why I'm doing this section. We just closed out chapter 5 and we're about to hit chapter 12. Since we're skipping some chapters in our book, what we have to be careful about is that your book is going to reference stuff from chapter 9 when we are trying to go over chapter 12. Now we're going to go over chapter 9 in Chem 1B, so I'm just going to go over a few concepts that I think are important in chapter 9 that will help you understand chapter 12 a little bit better. Now you guys can read the first couple of sections to chapter 9 if you want, but I'm going to highlight the major points that I think that you will need to do chapter 12. Chapter 9 deals with thermodynamics, and thermodynamics is the study of energy. And so energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. Now we've already seen one term of energy and that was kinetic energy. And what we saw was that kinetic energy is measured in joules. And you guys will recall a joule is a kilogram times a meter squared a second squared. So this is a common unit to measure energy. Now before I talk about an endo and exothermic process, what I have to establish is system versus surrounding. Now this is kind of a bookkeeping method when we, when we describe where energy is going. The system is the portion of our universe which we care about. The surrounding is everything else. So typically in chemistry, the system is your reactants coming together and forming products. The surroundings are going to be your glass container, any heat source you invoke, or any cooling devices, or anything outside of my reaction vessel. Now be very careful, we have to describe what these components are. Let's say I have a beaker of water, and I go into lab and I'm using a Bunsen burner to heat up that beaker of water. And let's say my system is going to be the water inside this beaker. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking water and adding energy to that water to boil off that water, turning it into water vapor. Now since I'm putting energy into my system, so in this case, water is my system, this is considered an endothermic process. An endothermic process is where you're taking energy from the surroundings and putting it into the system. However, let's go ahead and shift frames. Let's go ahead and say that instead of the water being my system, let's say my Bunsen burner is the system. And in my Bunsen burner, what I'm doing is I'm taking methane gas or natural gas and combusting it with O2. Now, as a consequence of this, I'm going to release energy. So a Bunsen burner gives off energy. Now remember, in this example, this is my system, the combustion reaction. Now what you'll notice is that energy is flowing out of my system. Now if energy flows out of my system and goes into the surroundings, then we consider this an exothermic process. So when we talk about endo and exothermic processes, it's important to establish what we consider the system and someone, either you or me, have to define what the system is. And depending on where energy is going, we're gonna consider the process endo or exothermic. Now we should talk about some sign conventions. As chemists, we are going to take the point of view of the system. And what that means is, is if the system is gaining energy, such as an endothermic process where energy is flowing into the system, we're gonna consider the sign of energy to be positive. If it's an exothermic process where energy is flowing out of my system, we are gonna put a negative sign when we describe energy. For example, if I have that liquid water and I add energy, I would get gaseous water. And let's say that the energy here is 40.8 kilojoules. 
So this would be a positive value because this is an endothermic process. But let's go ahead and say that I do the reverse process. I have gaseous water and I cool it down or take energy out of it to make liquid water. So now energy is coming out of my system. Now, if energy is coming out of my system, it's going to be a negative value. And it turns out if you reverse the reaction, you still keep the same magnitude of energy. So this bottom reaction is an exothermic process. And so remember, if you flip the reaction, you're going to flip the sign of energy. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem 1A, and remember to stay safe.